Okay, we're going to be using reference angles to find coordinates of points that are going to be on the unit circle. Sometimes we refer to these as being terminal points on the unit circle. So I'll go ahead and write that down here. These points are sometimes referred to as terminal points on the unit circle. So to do this, what we want to do is use our reference angles. So the first thing is we're given an angle of 7 pi over 6. I'm going to first locate which quadrant does 7 pi over 6 kind of land in. So to kind of draw this in, I've got my quadrantal angles and then 0 or 2 pi to go all the way around here. Well, 7 pi over 6 is an improper fraction, so it's bigger than 1 pi. So it's not going to be on the first or second quadrants. 7, 6 is a a little bit smaller than one and a half, which is what three halves means. So it's going to land into the third quadrant. So just kind of roughly sketching it in there that it wraps around this far for seven pi over six. If I want to draw in my reference angle, it always goes to the x-axis and that's important to note. I'm going to denote our reference angle with theta bar and the computation for finding theta bar is going to be the further of these two um, side lengths that makes it up or angles that make it up, and that's seven pi over six, minus the shorter of these two, which is gonna be pi. So my computation here really is gonna be seven pi over six minus, instead of rewriting, instead of it just being written as one pi, I can think of this as six pi over six. Um, six divided by six makes the same thing as one, um, if you reduce it back down. But this way we have a common denominator we can say seven pi's minus six pi's leaves us with one pi over that common denominator. So our common denominator here, uh, six comes along and we know our reference angle is gonna be pi over six. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is to get our terminal point, hopefully we recall that any point on the unit circle can be represented with cosine as the x value. So in this case, seven, cosine of seven pi over six, and then sine is the y value. So it goes cosine then sine of seven pi over six, the angle that was given to us initially. All right, but from here, we can actually evaluate these using the reference angle we just computed. So what I'd like to do is I would like to figure out as I plug in cosine instead of, of seven pi over six, I'm gonna say cosine of pi over six, and then sine of pi over six. All right, so I'm substituting in our reference angle that we just computed. But it's right here at this point that we have to be extra doubly, triply sure that we have the right sign out in front of each one of these trigonometric functions. So what I mean by that is based on that initial angle that we were given, and my nice little phrase, all students take calculus. We, our initial angle went into the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, only tangent, all students take calculus, only tangent and cotangent are positive. So as soon as we've plugged in that reference angle, cosine needs to be negative and sine needs to be negative as well for any point that's gonna be in the third quadrant. And it kind of makes sense if we think about any ordered pair out here in the third quadrant, you've gone to the left, so your X value is negative you've gone down, so any y value of this ordered pair is also going to be negative. But now that we've double checked on our positives or negatives out in front, now we can actually evaluate these. And to do so, pi over 6 is a pretty nice angle that that's equivalent to our 30 degree angle. So we say negative of cosine of pi over 6 is going to be negative of square root of 3 over 2. And then sine of pi over six, I'm gonna bring that negative along. Sine of pi over six is just one half. So there we have our terminal point on the unit circle um, for this, this ordered or this angle, seven pi over six. Let's work one more of these where five pi over three ends up in a different quadrant. So it's gonna be slightly different. All right, very similar though, as far as our computation and our thought process goes. First, we wanna think five pi over three, which quadrant do we end up in? All right, five pi over three is like one and two thirds pi's. Um, five divided by three is 1.67. Three divided by two is 1.5. So this is gonna end up in the 
fourth quadrant, just kind of roughly sketching it in there. It wraps around five pi over three, takes us this far around the circle. Okay, next our reference angle is always drawn to the x-axis. So this time the computation is gonna be two pi minus five pi over three. All right, two pi goes all the way around here, minus our shorter angle was the five pi over three only made it that far. Again, I'm gonna rewrite this so I have three as a common denominator because five pi over three already had three as the denominator. So instead of two pi, I'm gonna rewrite this as six pi over three, as I know that six divided by three is equivalent to this two. All right, gotta get that common denominator so we can do this computation. Six pi's minus five pi's leaves us with one pi. That's gonna be our reference angle, pi over three. Next, let's use that to get this terminal point. So again, our terminal point really is cosine of five pi over three, comma sine of five pi over three as an ordered pair. But we want to fill in our reference angle, pi over three, for each one of these. But it's at this point, as you're plugging in, substituting in the reference angle for each one of these, this is where you really need to double check and say to yourself, all students, take calculus. We are in the fourth quadrant because that's where the five pi over three landed. Cosine is gonna be positive, but sine is gonna be negative because only cosine and secant, it's reciprocal, are gonna be positive in the fourth quadrant. All right, so make sure this sine gets a negative out in front of it. All right, to finish this up, cosine of pi over three, and again, pi over three is one of these nice angles that shows up a whole lot. It's equivalent to 60 degrees. All right, so cosine of pi over three is one half. Bring along that negative, and then sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. And there's our terminal point, the point on the unit circle that corresponds with um, an angle of five pi over three. All right, hope this helps out as you're working on uh, getting reference angles and using them to get terminal points. Good luck.